Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this video where I'll talk about some basic modeling tools. So if you're a beginner or you're thinking about getting into the hobby but you don't know which tools are you gonna need to assemble your first model then I think this video will be for you. So let's say you pick your first model. If I can recommend something simple and interesting then you might be interested in something like this. Or if that's too small then maybe something like this which is bigger. <laughs> so yeah, these models have simple shapes, they don't have too many parts, and they don't contain a lot of photo edge details or other overly complicated stuff. So first of all, you're gonna need to somehow separate the parts from sprues. And for this, if we're talking about the most basic cheap budget tools, I'd recommend either regular manicure scissors which i've been using for most of my modeling life so i don't know 20 years or so or something more heavy duty basic side cutters side cutter pliers yeah i just recently started using these because they require a lot less force to break parts from the sprues and they're pretty okay. Of course, we have dedicated modeling side cutters, but these are expensive, like 20 plus euros. And these, you can get them for, I don't know, less than five bucks, I guess. And I suppose most people have something like this or this in their home. So yeah, if you have these, you're set. <laughs> then you, of course, need to clean these parts. And there are several tools which are required for this. So the most basic one is a hobby knife. And I'd recommend getting something really dedicated like this because, you know, there are lots of different types of knives, those box cutters and stuff like that, but these are too blunt. You need really something like a scalpel blade. And these also have replaceable blades, so yeah. And again, it's a really cheap tool. It costs, I don't know, less than two euros or so. And also, when you're at it, get some spare blades because blades get blunt even if you use them just to cut plastic and usually one blade lasts for about one model and you're really gonna feel it once it gets blunt so there are of course replaceable blades and we have different shapes and sizes and this is kind of personal i for example really like these sharp ones or pointy ones there are also shorter ones like like chisel shaped blades and so on also these also these curved ones which are good for scraping but i personally i have them but i don't use them i use these pretty much for everything so yeah definitely worth investing in a proper hobby blade and also once you replace a blade or you break the tip don't throw them away i for example store them in a small box and these come in handy when you're dealing with let's say photo edge which a lot of modern kits have included in the box. So yeah, a hobby blade is very handy when you need to slice off the remnants of sprue gates, also to carefully scrape off the seam line, which is present in all injection plastic kits because that's just the way they're manufactured. And then for the extra cleaning, you're gonna need some sanding sticks. Now, again, we have the more expensive modeling dedicated sanding sticks, but most of the ones that I use are just cheap, manicure sanding sticks so yeah you can get them in i don't know where <laughs> grocery store <laughs> no i mean you probably can borrow one from your girlfriend wife mom whatever of course sanding sticks are ideal when it comes to flat shapes but if you need to sand something that's round or has some random shape like a cast turret for example then you might need either sandpaper or a sanding sponge now this is kind of matter of personal preference i for example rarely use sandpaper i use sanding sponges in most of the cases and these you can get in the hardware store because these are made for uh wood carpenters yeah and so they are excellent because obviously they conform to whatever shape you put them on ideal for let's say sanding gun barrels or wheels and they don't need to be coarse at all this doesn't say what grit it is but i suppose it's something like 800 or 1000 
So yeah, that's all you're gonna need to sand plastic. But of course there will be situations when you need to really polish the surface. So in this case I really prefer this micro fine sanding sponge, which doesn't feel as fine like at all. But once you use it several times it gets a lot finer, so yeah, that's kinda a very nice thing to have. I think you can also get them in hardware stores or you can just use a very fine sandpaper like 2500 grit. So theoretically now you should have the parts for your model removed from spruce and cleaned up. So you need to start putting them on the model. And for very fine stuff it's ideal to have some precision pair of tweezers. Now what I really like are these very pointy ones and Nothing like curved tweezers or whatever, just plain straight pair of tweezers. And again, these are very cheap. You can actually buy them on eBay or AliExpress for cents basically. So yeah, and they're gonna last you forever. So now you have a tool to handle small stuff and now you need to glue it to the model. So modeling cements, there are lots of cements on the market some are thick, some are thin, some are extra thin and also fast curing, slow drying, so on and so forth. Um, it's kind of a personal thing, everyone has their own favorite cement. I personally really like Mr. Cement S because it's, it dries in seconds and it doesn't melt the plastic too much. So. It actually dries so fast that you need to first dry fit the part on the model and then hit it with the applicator brush. So yeah, this is very good. And because it doesn't melt the plastic too much, it doesn't leave any visible residue once it evaporates. Or you might be into something like Tamiya Extra Thin Cement or this ammo modeling cement which is very similar. These dry a little slower so you can apply them on the part and then position it on the model if that's something you'd prefer more. So yeah overall I would recommend something that's really thin. I don't really like those modeling cements like Revel or so on with that needle applicator. They're quite thick, they dry really slow and they can get really messy. So yeah Mr. Cement S is my favorite and I would recommend it to anyone. Now this is not really a modeling tool but it can be handy and again it's something that I suppose everyone has in their home laundry packs and they have kind of a I'd say limited use when you're constructing a model but let's say for example you're gluing a plastic gun barrel which comes in two halves so normally you need to align it perfectly apply the modeling cement and then let it dry and these are excellent for it because you can you know squeeze it together and let it sit and if you line it properly and some melted plastic squeezes out you won't need to use putty at all you'll just sand it and it's gonna be perfect like i said a lot of modern kits come with some basic photo wedge and this can't be glued with modeling cement you're gonna have to use super glue so normally Especially if you're a beginner, it's a complete minefield when it comes to super glues. There are black super glues, there are debonders, activators, and so on. But in order to keep it simple, a basic, cheap grocery store super glue in a tube is gonna be more than enough. But again, even these come in different thicknesses. So I'd personally recommend the extra thin one because even if you spill some, it's gonna be not so visible and it's also gonna be easier to sand. And of course you're gonna need something to apply the super glue. Now again, I for example have a custom made super glue applicator from a guitar string and an old brush handle, but most of the time just regular toothpicks are gonna be more than enough. You can obviously sharpen them with a hobby blade if you want them to be more precise, but I still see a lot of modelers use regular toothpicks for this. And of course it's good to have something where you can squeeze out the super glue and then apply it with a toothpick. I for example have an old jar lid which is already full of dried super glue so yeah something like this. Most of the modern kits on the market have excellent fit. There are even some kits which don't need any putty at all if you assemble them correctly. But even then there's always the odd situation where you need to fill something and for this my favorite putty is 
regular Tamiya gray standard. Does it say standard? Basic, basic type. Yeah, the gray one. There's also the white one from Tamiya. This tends to sink a little when it dries. So yeah, this all day long, it's bulletproof. There's nothing wrong with it, it never let me down. And again, this is fairly cheap, it's less than 10 euros, so... Yeah, and it's also gonna last you for a long time. But just like with super glue, you'll need something to apply the putty with. So, again, I've seen people using old hobby blades to spread the putty on the model. You can also use toothpicks. There's lots of options. I, for example, have an old dental sculpting thing which has this chisel shape so it's perfect to you know wrap the body and nicely spread it on the surface squeeze it into the gap but again this is sort of hard to get i had to beg my dentist to give it to me so yeah toothpicks or an old hobby blade or just be creative I'm sure you're gonna find something that's gonna suit you. There are also times when you need to drill something into the model, be it machine gun barrel or some locating holes from the inside. And for this, obviously, it's a very good to have a small handheld pin vise. Again, these are very cheap tools. I don't remember how much this cost. I've had it since I was a kid. I recently bought this black one from AliExpress and it came with I think like 50 drill bits and the whole thing cost eight dollars so yeah a really good bargain so yeah it's something good to have although then again you can use a hobby blade to drill out things for example again machine gun barrels you can stick the point of the blade into the center and just twist it and you have a drilled out gun barrel but i still think it's very good to have one of these and also the drill bits themselves uh, again for example, I have this, which is sold by a local modeling shop in Slovakia. The whole set costs one euro. It's from 0 0.2 to one millimeter. And you have three of each size. And yeah, these are the sizes you're gonna usually need as a modeler. Obviously the smallest ones like 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 are so delicate, you're most likely gonna break them. So I rarely use them. So yeah, everything from 0 0.4 upward to, let's say, 2 millimeters. It's good to have these at hand. Like I said, that pin vise from AliExpress came with several drill bits. I have them all here in this box. And yeah, modeling stores sometimes have them, but more usually you can buy them, again, in a hardware store or more likely in an electric store or something like that for electricians. <laughs> And finally, the last essential thing, which I feel like it's kind of important, is some kind of old piece of styrene or something similar. Because even if you have a modeling cutting mat, it's kind of soft. And when you're removing photo edge from the photo edge fret or whatever it's called, you need to sort of chop it out. And regular modeling mats are too soft for this. So yeah, something that won't give and it won't blunt the hobby blade so i mean it's not really necessary but it can make your life easier and yeah these are the most basic essential modeling tools of course it's just my personal opinion but i think these will make your life easier and help you assemble your first models obviously if you're a beginner and you're getting into the hobby keep things simple so mostly focus on assembling the model without spilled glue without visible gaps with clean seam lines and remnants of sprue gates that kind of stuff because even this requires some fineness and skill and it's a kind of fun on its own to clean up parts and once you get familiar with this then you can transition to something like you know basic improving techniques like armor textures and yeah i'd probably just keep it at armor textures so yeah i hope you found this video helpful or at least interesting to watch and let me know down in the comments if you have some of your own personal favorite modeling tools something basic that other people might find interesting and if you like the video then give it a like subscribe if you're new to this channel because i keep posting stuff like this and also lots of modeling builds all the time or dislike if you didn't like it because i'm just interested in your honest opinion really so yeah and if you really enjoyed the video then next time we might do something like an 
extension of this video and we can talk about advanced modeling tools like soldering iron photo edge bending tool rotary tools and so on so yeah also let me know down in the comments if you'd like something like this anyway thank you for watching also thank you to my amazing patrons who make this weekly show possible and if you'd be interested in more content from me then patreon is the best place to go because it's sort of like a magazine subscription i keep posting there all the time almost every day and there are things like almost daily photo updates from my workbench from all my projects also one week early ad free videos so you might be able to watch the next one right now and what else yeah, DM so we can get in touch. Maybe I can offer you some advice on your own projects or something. And also these really nice studio photos from all my projects, which are in full resolution, they are downloadable. So you can save them to your hard drive and use them for, I don't know, personal reference or something. <laughs> so I think that's all I wanted to tell you, my friends. Again, thank you for watching. Give the video a like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't like it, and I guess I'll see you again the next week. Cheers, my friends. <laughs>